Red, do you remember where the plane is? No, it's not that way. The plane is over in the desert, all right? I'll see you over there. No, in the other direction. That direction, that's right. Hurry up now, don't fall again. What, where do, where's Fred? Have you seen Fred? I was just talking to him about helping me with this incident. to help me pull this thing off on the count of three. You ready? One, two, three, pull. Oh my God, I think it's stuck. That's not working. Um, hey, maybe we can get some of your friends from the village that way. I just think we just need a little, you know, muscle here. Could you, could you all come and help us pull this thing off of here? Like on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three, pull. Ow! Oh, shoot. Ah, 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 ah. Well, I snatched my finger. Oh, darn it, I hate that. Darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it. Oh, that snapped something fierce. Oh. Ah. Ah. You know, I just, I gotta distract him. Oh, thank you, yeah, distract me. I need to just distract him. Oh, ow, okay. Well, I know, I I'll tell you all a story, right? I'll tell you a story of the first time I stake. Yeah, that'll, that'll help cool it down a bit. There we go. Yeah, oh, it's not like, well, actually, I just, Hungry. All right, so let me tell you about the time that I first felt like I was flying. I, I, I think I told you the story before. I must have been like six or seven years old, and I, I snuck down to my grandmother's basement, and down there there was a sled, and I spent all summer waiting for, for it to snow after we fixed the sled. Midge and I, my sister, you know, we fixed the sled and then spent all summer until it was winter, and finally it got snowing, and then we looked outside. And we ran outside. Grandmother's yelling, don't you be belly flopping like them boys. But we did. We ran outside, got to a hill as tall as this one. And you know what we did? Whoosh! We slid right down that hill like no one's business. It was amazing, I tell you. Oh, my God. It was something fabulous. Oh, now, I wasn't thinking too closely. Now, was I? Because at the bottom of the hill was a, a road with a blind corner. And around that corner came a horse and buggy slid right underneath that horse's belly. I did. I did. Are oh, you shaking your head, though? No. I did. <laughs> scared the horse more than I scared myself. While I brushed myself off, I looked up at the sky and I yelled, Midge, it feels like I'm flying. And I thought, why is that the domain of men? Right? Why? <laughs> Women should try as men have tried, right? And if they fail, well, shh, let their failure be but a, a challenge to others, right? Yes, exactly. And that is probably why I am the famous Amelia Earhart to this day. Yeah. Hey, Fred, could you do that thing where you, you fix the plane a little bit? Because it's looking a little sad down on the ground like this. I just hate seeing her like this. She's such a beauty. Oh, state of the art in her day. Oh, my God. Look at Electra is back. Oh, my goodness. There she is. Oh, wow. She used to cut the sky like like war, a warm knife through butter. Just, just a dream still wasn't enough fuel to get us where we were going. But we did try, didn't we, Fred? We did try. Wait, where did Fred go? Hey, where did you go, Fred? You just took off like <laughs> I didn't see you. Oh, you, got, you, you died. Did you die? You died and went to heaven? Well, shall we all die and go to heaven? Come on, everyone. Let's, let's do that. Let's all die and go well, to heaven as, as we know it, of course, which is through here. Let's all jump through. Come on, everyone, jump into the plane. Ah, here we are. Oh, isn't this just a dream? I just 
I just love it. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, yeah, so gorgeous. There you are, Fred. I mean, it, what more could you ask for, right? I mean, we had our, we had our days, didn't we, Fred? We'd, we'd leave the hustle and bustle of Los Angeles and end up in places like this, like heaven. Now, yes, right, with the breeze blowing through the palm trees, I can feel it just, just lifting my hair off my skull. Not that I have any more now, but. Yeah, we used to come here, and, and oh, the villagers would always treat us like royalty, didn't they? You all took care of us. And whenever we showed up, we were, we were so important and, and big noted in the village. You know, hard to keep up when you're in L.A. I mean, certainly I had my yeah. share of, like, you know, photographers following me around and wanting photos. But I have to compete with all the stars and starlets of Hollywood. But here, amongst the peacefulness of the island, well, they taught us the hula dance. Do you remember, Fred? Yeah, show, show us some of the moves. Yeah, Fred was really good at the hula dance. And, that's right. And, and each of the hand movements had a different interpretation. Yes, that was the waves. Yeah, they represented the waves in the water. Yeah, that's right. And then this here was the fire, the fire burning. Yes, that's right. And then the we, the wind and the, and the trees, the fire burns and the wind and the trees. That's right. And then the waves came in. Oh, and then the, yeah, of course, the ending pose was always, it was always the beautiful maiden on the island. <laughs> right? And then there was always like a, a very grand hero. Let me see. The, you remember the, the pose for the hero? The, the hero? Yeah. Yes, that's right, that's right, right? So every single movement had a little bit of a different meaning, and they would tell these stories with these, these movements and words. Why don't you tell a story? Yeah, Fred, tell a story. Yeah, one of the hula stories, do you remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, the sunset and the days going by. That's right. And the waves and the peacefulness of this beautiful island that we all come to know as our home. Yeah, that's right. And then, then there was a tumultuous storm that came along. Right, the storm kicked up, and up from the sea came a beautiful maiden. And there she was with long hair that she stroked and combed with a seashell. And she was so beautiful that she struck the islanders as the most beautiful creature they had ever seen. And so they held a contest amongst all the villagers of who would get to marry this beautiful maiden. So first up was our, our, our priest, our, our magical sorcerer of the village, the shaman, as they say, stepped forward to try to win the hand of the maiden. That's right, he stepped forward. And then he came closer to her and made a magical, magic trick with his hands. That's right, he created an onion and gave it to her. She was delighted by the onion. Never had she tasted an onion so sweet. She'd never had one as she'd only ever had seafood. She thanked the lovely shaman, and he stepped by. And then came the elder from the village who wanted to win her hand. A, an elder from... He, he held on to the, the treasury of the, of the island and took care of that. So, of course, this elderman had lots of money, and he tried to woo her with things. So many things that he could could give her, like apples, and, oh, a beautiful little toy, which she loved. She was so delighted. She thanked the lovely elderman and said, thank you, right? And then stepped forward a virtuous gentleman, someone who had a lot of goodness and kindness, and so... Since he didn't have a lot to give her, he did a dance for her to show him his way. And then spoke a poem, which was to the ears the most beautiful poem anyone had ever heard. 
Oh, this is going so well. And then he stepped back and forward came, well, the super handsome gentleman. That's right, he came forward strutting his stuff, showing her his muscles and saying, Oh, I am the most virile person here and I could give you lots of beautiful children. And she nodded and thanked him. So that's nice. You are quite handsome. Thank you. And he stepped back. And then the maiden from the sea had to make a choice. Did she want to choose one of these fine gentlemen? Or did she want to go back out to the sea and live her life out there, singly among the fishes? What did she choose? Hmm, we are all wondering. Is she going to choose? Oh, she chooses the rich gentleman. Oh, wonderful! That's so wonderful. And oh, there it is. They got married, and everyone was happy. Actually, let's have a little marriage ceremony. Up walks the clergyman. That's right. And he says, Though I have loved you from afar, I understand that you have chosen who you have. Oh, no, you are the clergyman. That's right. Come on, get to move closer. That's right, get in there. That's right, you are. Yes, because of your hat. You're just like clergy-like. Yes, so. Yes, that's right. You, I now pronounce you husband and wife. And they looked happily ever after. <laughs> oh, well, gosh, this has been so fun and silly. I should get back. I know that the... There are many things for me to do. I have to think about different ways that can possibly fix the plane. Fred, don't stay out too late tonight, okay? Oh, my goodness. So I think I do think that we happen to make a love match. <laughs> Fred, don't stay out too late tonight with your new married um, guest. Perhaps you'll get up early tomorrow and help me with the plane, okay? All right, everyone. Thank you. This has been, this has been lovely. And what a fun story we created together. Oh, thank you so much. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> this was so much fun.